Hey guys, welcome back, Posta B. Yeah, I know I look lovely. I just got up, but I want to record this, so. Had this stream with Loki, and, um, maybe there was more to it, but this is what I remember. I was going to be staying in this huge cabin. Like, it was almost like a mansion, but it looked like a cabin. And there was, like, a party going on, and lights and music and everything i don't know if it was supposed to be like fairies in the cabin or just whatever but there was like a sense of being rich and everything and it was kind of in this park somewhere i'm not sure where it was but it was like a park maybe a national park or something and i had somehow made a very rich very opulent version of Loki of the black haired you know black closed one and I was showing it to the actual black haired black closed one and he he's just sitting there and I'm like isn't he isn't he nice and you know isn't he grand and um I guess I made him to kind of like take him with me or something I don't know what I'd made him for but the actual actual version of Loki was having none of it he got up and he killed him with a black dagger and I remember it was like this really big black dagger and it was like kind of like curved in that and that's what he thought of that and the the dream the actual Loki um he has really potent male energy and the dream was just absolutely saturated with it not in a come on to you way but in a um I'm, a, you know, I'm a male, I'm a god, and that's the most wonderful thing in the universe. So there, you could actually smell it in the air, this, you know, this, like, male, masculine scent. So that was, like, absolutely everywhere in the dream, and he's just like, I'm, I'm a god, and you're not going to do anything about it. The closest example I can think of is if you know a tomcat, he's very happy with his masculinity, and he's just very proud. It's kind of like that. And then the dream, I met the um, white clad version of Loki. Um, he, he's clad in white and he has long white hair and such forth and such not. And I told him, well, I'm going to be staying in the cabin because I thought, well, he, he'll, he'll, be the, he'll be the happy one for me. And he just smiled at me and he's like, you're, you're not going to be staying in that cabin. You're staying in the small plane cabin near me like it's like one room and everything else and I'm like well what am I gonna do for firewood and everything because up there they have this party going on and lights and music and everything and and they would feed me and everything and he's like you're you're staying here in this one room plane cabin it wasn't bad it was like made out of like the same wood as a huge big cabin but no electricity or anything I don't think and he says, you're staying here. And I said, well, what am I going to do for, like, wood and light and everything? And he takes me out and he shows me this um, growing tree. It's like a white pine. And he's like, there, there's your wood. And he says, good luck with that. And I don't have an axe or anything, but, you know, and then he walks away. And he's smiling. He's very content with himself. And same masculine, very potent God energy. And I, I'm going to ask him if I can go into the woods and at least gather sticks because it's like you know the woods all around us but like where these cabins and everything are it's like all completely like cleared and as I turn back you know towards a tree to just look at the tree like what am I supposed to do with you because I, I wouldn't cut down a living tree one it's not gonna make very good firewood and two I just wouldn't do it um, there's like wood there and I don't know if it was hit with an axe by someone who didn't know what they were doing, but it was like all twisted and, um, it looked like people were just like, almost like a tree had been hit like by lightning or like a storm had come and just totally destroyed a tree, but there, there was my wood. And suddenly I had this radio. I had a radio and I slung like the, um. There was like a carry strap on. I slung it over my shoulder and I put the radio on so I could have music to work to. And I was going to gather this this wood. 
And he had kind of disappeared into like this cabin where it kind of like you knew he was in charge there. And that was it. That was the dream. But it was like, it's almost like Loki was saying, you know, you're trying to make this fancy elaborate version of me and I'm not having none of it. And you thought you were going to go off to this fancy elaborate party. No, I don't know if it had to do with the fairies or what it had to do with. But it was like, I was going to go off with these people. Okay, and I was going to go to this party that once was clear. And he's like, I'm, I'm not having none of it. You're, you're staying with me. Um, and you're staying in this little plain cabin and I'm keeping an eye on you. And he's very pleased with himself. And the dream had that really potent masculine energy. And usually he's like really, I wouldn't say well behaved, but usually it's not like a thing he flaunts every single time I see him. And it, it was just like, you know, I'm even having trouble starting to remember it now. But it was like, it was absolutely super saturated into the dream and you could smell it in the air. And he's like, you know, I'm, I'm a god and it's the most wonderful thing in the universe. And again, it wasn't like a come on thing. It was just like, I'm a god. It's the most wonderful thing in the universe. And I'm your god. And don't you forget it. And... I have no idea what he meant by that, but I wanted to record it, and in my turn out four days later, I have a totally different understanding of the dream than I do now. I'm kind of tired today, I don't feel that good, so I might go get some rest, but I wanted to record that before I forgot it all, because it's, it's already slipping away as I record it. Okay guys, if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.